I'm going to explain to you how good dispersion is incredibly important in any artist colour. All artist colours are essentially pigment within a binder. Pigments are small hard particles of material that provide the colour or hue to the medium. The binder is what coats and carries that pigment out of the container and ensures that it stays on the required surface. For watercolour, the binder is gum arabic in solid form here and then in its liquid form. For acrylic, it's an acrylic emulsion. And then for oil colours, it's predominantly linseed oil or for some whites or paler blues, we use safflower oil. To make a really good, strong, stable artist colour, what you need to do is achieve a perfect balancing act between the amount of pigment that you load into the colour and how well you disperse that pigment. Here at Windsor & Newton what we do is we put as much pigment as possible into each individual colour and then ensure we disperse that pigment very evenly throughout the binder. To understand dispersion, a good analogy is to imagine your pigment as a bag full of balls. If you then throw those balls into a swimming pool, what will happen is those balls will just naturally sink to the bottom and amass together. If this is your pigment within a binder, what you'll see is a, a, a sort of uneven lump, basically, as your colour. And as sunlight passes in and out of the swimming pool, sometimes it's passing straight through water and achieving no colour, and sometimes it's hitting this lump at the bottom, this mass, and coming off very uneven and not looking very bright or stable. If you were then to space the balls very evenly, both horizontally and vertically throughout the swimming pool, what you then achieve as sunlight goes in and out of the swimming pool is it's hitting lots of individual particles or balls. If this is your pigment, the sunlight is refracting backwards, looking very, very clean, very, very bright and really stable as well. You've got no excess water, i.e. no excess binder in your colour. It's this balancing act that will give you the best possible artist colours. All of our milling and grinding processes are aimed at getting the best dispersion possible. During production, to ensure that we've achieved the correct dispersion through our colours, we use this, which is called a Hegman gauge. What you have here is two channels side by side that start off at 50 microns deep and eventually peter out to nothing. So this is a gradual slope here. Now to test the dispersion of a colour, what we do is we put a, a dab of colour in this channel and also I'm going to put a dab of colour in this channel as well. Now, this is our Cotman Alice Crimson here. This is the pre-milled or dispersed colour and this is the fully milled and dispersed colour on the left here. Now, I take this rider and drag it down the gauge And what you can see, there's actually lines appearing around this level here and it, it peters out to nothing here, whereas the fully dispersed or milled colour, the lines start appearing down here and the colour peters out to nothing further down. Now this shows that the pigment has been ground up and finely dispersed throughout the binder. And hopefully you can actually see that this colour here is a lot duller, whereas this is almost a completely different colour once it's been milled. To see these two colours painted out, you can see the pre-milled colour here and the fully milled colour here. It says that the pigment has been milled to 10 microns in size. And as you can see, this is dull, grainy, lumpy and not particularly inspiring. Whereas this fully dispersed or fully milled colour here is nice and clean, bright, it actually shines off the page. So to make the best possible artist colours, what you need to do is achieve a very fine balancing act between loading as much pigment as possible into the colour and then dispersing that using the best techniques possible. Here at Windsor & Newton, that's exactly what we do and that's exactly why we can make the best art materials in the world.